Welcome everyone. We are here at the Black Hat Security Convention in a very warm pool cabana. Uh, it's okay, but there's a pool. Uh, but before we go in the pool, we're going to uh, talk about security with uh, two fine individuals from HP. Uh, to my right is Michael Howard, the Chief Security Advisor for Hewlett Packard. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Dr. Kimberly Brannick is also here. She's the Senior Security Advisor for HP. Welcome. Yes, well, thank you so much. Pleasure it's to be a, here. It's wonderful to have you both. Uh, I wanted to just start by talking about a, a high level, some of the security services that HP offers. Uh, can we say HP or do we have to say HPE? HP is well, perfect. HP, HP is, is perfect, okay. Yes. So when people think of uh, Hewlett Packard, obviously they think of printers, right? Maybe computers. Right. Um, but in security today, you have uh, different arms that offer different services. So what are some of the general cybersecurity services or products that, that are offered today? Well, so on our side, we do endpoint security, so printers okay. and the PCs, and we offer advisory services around there where we come in and assess mm -hmm. our customers' uh, environment and then offer guidance of where they need to go and build a framework of where they're at today with their security mm -hmm. and where they need to take it to. It, Kimberly? And, and the thing about it is that we are also a security company. We've been putting endpoints on the network for many, many years. This isn't something that's new for us. Sure. Now, when you say endpoints, I mean, you're talking about generic printers and, and uh, computing devices, not necessarily an endpoint like security product that is installed on it, or is that in Correct. the mix? Here? No, when we're talking endpoints, we're talking about any uh, Internet of Things devices that touches the network, whether sure. it's a PC, a printer, a, a cell phone, anything that touches the network is an endpoint. Right. What are some of the greatest challenges that you are uh, observing in the customers that you're, you're working with? You know, I think we, we see lack of resources in many customers, so we see the fact that they know they need to do more with security, but they just don't have the time and the resources to do it. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, prioritizing and putting some of what they think can be put off till later occurs a lot, which is a dangerous way to approach security. Um, we also see a lot of uh, inattention to all of the devices that are touching. So people are still securing servers, firewalls, PCs, but they're ignoring some of the other things that they need to and just hoping that they're not going to have any incidents happen. What do, you, what do you find they're ignoring that's most scary to, to you? Well, when I look at the endpoints that are out there, obviously printers largely are ignored today and we still go into many organizations where they can have 10, 20, thousand printers on their network and they have not even taken any considerations about locking them down. Um, they just consider that they're probably, you know, older technology that doesn't need to be secured, which is just totally wrong. Uh, printers, MFPs have gotten much more intelligent. They're a computer on your network and you have to treat them the same way that you would anything else that's touching your network. Would you agree or do you see from a different perspective? So we do see um, a very similar theme with endpoints. It, we, we take a step back and we say endpoints even though printers are part of the equation because when you approach security you should be looking at everything and people don't. And that's something that we're striving to educate people on is you, you've got to look at your whole environment holistically. Yeah. You have to manage everything that's on the network, and even some of the more advanced organizations that I speak with, they're worried about that that one percent. They, right. they come to me they're like, Paul, I got a really good idea of what's on my network and, and everything in an asset inventory, but I still feel like I'm missing that one percent. Right. How do I get a hundred percent coverage? Right. How, and I'm sure you get the same question. What, right. What's your advice for the really enthusiastic ones that are like, I want to know about that one percent, but I don't know about today? Well, you have to do your due diligence and start getting an inventory mm -hmm. and there's a lot of mechanisms so if something is on your network you can start scanning and get I a list of IPs that's a good starting point there's a lot of tools that are out there matter of fact HP has webjet admin that's a free tool that you yep. can download and it does do an inventory of your print fleet and it gets you a, at least a start but it's important to, to, to start going through and anything that you can identify, you need to start identifying it because until you know what it is, you can't manage it. Right. Yeah, very well, secure. Well, management is part of security. So right, well, that is, yeah. exactly. Because then once you know what to, you need to do, security then starts to come into the equation. You need to figure out what those devices are, how you lock them down. And when I use the word lockdown, I mean how do you configure it for its job. You know, oftentimes people, this is another thing we see, is that people overlook a device because of its job. 
they think, oh, it's not a big deal because it's a thermostat or it's uh, monitoring a, a fish tank. Kimberly, you said something that it was very prolific. I do a lot of these interviews. But configuring it for its job. Yes. And I feel like we get so many endpoints on our network that they have other services that they're not controlling access to users, they're not controlling access of who can administer them, and those are exactly. very different things. But right. the way you stated, configuring for its job means it acts as a thermostat. And only people who are authorized to control the thermostat should have access to the thermostat. Yeah. Exactly. It's a really good way of looking at it. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and that's what you get. When you get control and you know what every device is, then it allows you to start setting rules and roles and really start okay. determining how are you using this. Even even in if you look at a, a, a printer, does everybody need to fax? Does everybody need to copy? Does everybody need to scan? And you can't control that unless you have visibility to it and you're managing and you're monitoring it. And I think another big thing that we see in all the procurement of the Internet of Thing devices is procurement is still in charge of many companies of what is bought and every purchasing decision needs to be based on security today so they really need to start getting the security teams involved and make sure that they understand what's going to be touching their networks and not let procurement just buy things to put out there. You hit it on a topic we talked about in the show that I didn't have a really good answer and I think you probably have a better answer than I do given your position. Who in the enterprise organization today is purchasing the printers? Who's making the decision in procuring it? Is, is security making recommendations? Is IT even involved in that? Or am I someone who works in accounting who goes, I really need a printer, and they're going to Best Buy or they're going to Amazon or wherever, yep. and they're buying a printer? How does it, is it all over the map? It, it is all over the map, and I think what we see for the most part is it's still being purchased by printers kind of came out of the copier world yes. in management, so we still see facilities and procurement doing a lot of it, and in a in lot of companies, IT is not even involved yet, uh, and certainly not up at the security level, so it's not unusual for us to meet with a, a CISO that doesn't have any visibility to what's going on in the print. And then also, you do have the, the rogue people that go out and just buy a printer and add it to your network, and do you even know that it's there at that point? So it's yeah. very hard to control. You can't control what you don't know. Right. So it's all a matter of, of changing buying patterns, changing habits, you wouldn't let your procurement necessarily buy all the laptops and PCs. Security is going to decide what you need to put on there. Mm -hmm. The same thing it needs to happen with printing. Well, and I also think the setting process and guidelines about how devices are managed, right? Right. And adhering so that if someone does go get a printer and put it on the network, like that's okay as long as they're following the guidelines to say, well, IT has to manage it and make sure that it's up to date on all of its firmware, which is the basic 101, right? Right. For securing the printer, and I'm sure you both agree, right. that we do. having the latest firmware right. is, is protecting that, that particular device. Well, Absolutely. Like, well, and it goes back to what that printer's job, though, is, too. What data is getting stored on it, because that does happen. What data is getting printed off of it? Who has access to print? Because some organizations, such as entertainment companies that make movies, when they're creating a storybook, they're printing out things that is their IP. They're printing out the scripts. And they right. are. They're printing out the scripts. They're printing out the the storybooks. And so uh, the X Files script yes. was on red paper with black ink, so it couldn't yes. be photocopied. Right. So, uh, and they like distributed it. Exactly. Yeah. So so you so you, again you have to be thinking about you know what is that job mm -hmm. that that printer needs to be doing? Is it basic copying and printing? Is or it is printing there checks? If, exactly. They work for an organization. Exactly. And they're like, yeah, there's a printer in the data center and it, exactly. it prints everyone's paycheck. And I'm like, what? Yes, <laughs> exactly. And and again, you you want to treat that like any other intelligent device. You yeah. want to configure it. You want to lock it down. Mm -hmm. You want to have authentication so people that aren't authorized to print a check can't print a check. Right. So again, you know, and, and it's, every organization is different. So one of the things you want to ask is, you know, what, what are you what are the big things that you want to protect and why, and what devices come into the equation, including printers? And, but what you're saying also, Kimberly, is it's about the sensitivity of the data. Exactly. Absolutely. It's not just that there's a printer, but what kind of data is going through that printer. Exactly. And then applying security appropriately exactly. because 
exactly. The public printer in your hotel chain that everyone used to print their boarding passes doesn't need the same level of security as the same printer printer checks. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's true throughout any organization, right? If you're doing a good assessment of what they need to do, you need to be assessing what do they need to do in the legal department, what's going on in finance department, what's going on on the manufacturing floor. They're using those devices in different ways, and there's different proprietary information that needs to be protected. And so that helps you set the level of rules and roles that you want to roll out. So for those listening today that are like, well, I have a lot of printers, I've got a lot of maybe HP servers and uh, endpoints, what are some of the tools available to them? And not just software tools, but resources that they can use, whether it's advisory services, you mentioned WebJet Admin, what are some resources for our business? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things that's become very popular with the, the team that I run is being able to come in and assess and really give them a good visibility of what they're doing before you move forward. And that is using the tools like WebJet Admin, using uh, security management manager to look at what are your current device configurations, right? So every multifunction printer has anywhere between 150 and 250 settings for their ports and protocols. How are you managing those? How are those set? Understanding all of that and then figuring out, number one, how do we secure the device? Once we've secured the device, then we can move on to how do we use the devices and what are security solutions on that? Authentication of the device, right? Do you really want somebody walking up to a device on your network that can do anything any of the features and functions without actually knowing who's there. Right. So that gets into authentication. Then after authentication, then you start looking at workflow. What are we moving through? What's the proprietary data? And how do we control that data? So it all starts with really doing an assessment and understanding to start with how do you secure the device and then how do you use that device as we've talked about. Kimberly, resources for our Well, I'm right there with Michael. I think, again, getting a good understanding of what's happening in your environment to have that baseline is really powerful because once that's established, the other thing that we do is we provide a, a roadmap to help our clients improve. And that roadmap is broken over a, approximately a 12-month period of time. And it's really exciting when people who have historically overlooked things, such as their entire print fleet, to, to have a really low score on that baseline, but in a year to come back and, and, and see significant improvement. And one of the things that we are always saying as well is just because you're in compliance with that doesn't mean you're secure. However, by applying all of those protocols and those control points, you are helping to improve your security posture, which is really exciting to see clients do. And you can build on that from there. Exactly. You focused on the, the asset portion. Yes. If you don't know what you have, you can't build a security program. If you don't know who your users are and what they should have access to, how do you start building a security program that has solutions? Right. What problem are they solving? You don't right. know yet. Right. You don't know. And there's not a CISO in the world that likes having a blind spot. Yeah. Exactly. And, and what we point out and what we see in almost every engagement that we do is there's numerous blind spots and it really makes a CISO nervous when they realize that. So it's how do you close that down? Another thing is also choosing the devices, right? When you talk about somebody going out and buying one, they're buying a lower end consumer model. So a lot of times that they're bringing and introducing into yeah. your enterprise, doesn't have the same security features built in. Yeah. So it's a matter of choosing the right features that you want in the device, malware protection through what we do with runtime intrusion, inspecting anomalous behavior of incoming and outgoing to make sure that if you see it, and then also integrating that in with your SIM tools so that your security operations center sees all that. Right. And most people are not doing that today. So again, huge blind spot and a hard way to manage your devices. You'll get a return on investment just by getting those under control because it's just easier to manage and it's lower cost for your team to manage that. Yes. Michael and Kimberly, thank you so much. Oh, thank for your you. You're very welcome. Yes, thank you for thank having you. us. Thank you for watching this interview from Las Vegas. If you want to watch and learn more, go to securityweekly.com forward slash summercamp18 or go to our YouTube channel, Security Weekly, to view the playlist.